The rich get richer and the poor grow broke. And it's the rich's fault. I can't tell you how many times I heard that growing up. And I have come to believe it. Deep down in my soul, maybe, even though I argue with it. Even though I look at the idea and I say, is it really the rich's fault that the broke are broke? Or is it the broke's fault because they won't do anything about it? That they are stuck where they are because of their own belief system. I can tell you in my own life, when I had opportunities to make a lot more money than I was making, when I was in the right job to make a lot of money, when I had the opportunity to grow even from there, the belief system that the rich get richer and the poor go broke and it's the rich's fault made me despise the rich to the degree that I didn't want to be one. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. There are a lot of those deep-seated beliefs that we hold on to throughout the course of our life. They may be about different cultures of people, different races of people, different belief systems of people, different political persuasions of people, different national origins or sexual orientations of people. But once those ideas are in our head, they get into our soul. And we make decisions based on those beliefs, whether they're right or not. In fact, if you were to ask yourself some of those decisions about what you believe, you would find yourself in an argument with yourself. Because there are things that you do on a daily basis. The way you treat an absolute stranger in the grocery store is less likely to be based on their behavior their character, their conversation, and more based on what you believe about that type of person, about the way they're dressed, the car they drive, and the place they're from. I'll give you a classic example of this. There was a movie many, many years ago called Pretty Woman. And in the movie, Julia Roberts played the role of a high-priced call girl. While she gets hired, if you will, by a very wealthy man who's uh, a very controlling, manipulative man, not a Fifty Shades of Grey kind of guy, but he was pretty wealthy and kind of wanted what he wanted. Uh, But he took a liking to her, more in a love interest than just a hire for the day kind of an interest. He needed a beautiful woman to be his escort through some things that he was going to be doing that required that his spouse be there and he didn't have one. So he hired her and, and then tried to make her look the part, not of a high-priced call girl, but a very wealthy, cultured, intelligent woman. And that's pretty much the crux of the whole movie. But in this one scene, this high-priced call girl in her high-priced call girl clothes walks into a clothing store on Rodeo Drive in Hollywood. And when she walks in the door none of the salespeople would talk to her. They all had a belief that she doesn't have the money, she can't afford to be in here, whatever she looks at is going to be cheap, we're not going to make any sales commission, it's just not worth the trouble. They believed something about her because of her looks, because of their past experiences, because of their own behavior, because of their own internal judgments, and they believed something about her true or not. The facts didn't matter, only what they believed. The classic line from the movie is, When the rich guy comes back and he says, did you get the clothes you were looking for? She cries. She says, no one would even talk to me. And he goes back into the clothing store with a whole lot of money and says, I want you to be nice to her. I want you to be nicer than that to her. See, there's this belief system that when you have money, you have influence and you have power. There's a belief system that certain kinds of people from certain parts of town, they they just can't can't cut it. They can't do it. They're not smart enough. They're not capable. They have the wrong understanding about the world. If you're going to be a leader, you need to understand that your biggest challenge is not the people outside. Your greatest enemy is the inner me. What's stopping you today has less to do with the forces of politics, has less to do with the forces of religion, has less to do with the forces of racism. It has a lot to do 
with what's going on inside your own head, what you believe about you, what you believe about other people, what you believe about the system and the world. That's really what's making the decisions in your life. And you will continue to make judgments, to make decisions, to take action or not take action based on what you believe about you, about money, about science, about politics, about gender. You've got to confront your own beliefs if you want to lead. <clears throat> because if you're not living your life based on facts, the people around you are going to be impacted by that and it's going to be really hard to lead. I'm Jay Lauren Norris for Leading Leaders Podcast on Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.